Welcome back to EXPN, the experience, the big fancy news channel that shows you nonstop coverage of the League of Ultimate Questing. No dungeon too deep, no quest too questionable. Dirk. That's right, I'm Dirk Bradley, and he's Warren Rustboro, a.k.a. Best Friend Rusty. This show is like an all-you-can-eat buffet, but all the big pans of noodles are heroic combat, and all the crunchy fried cheese things are fantasy magic. And the soft serve ice cream machine is full of dungeon puzzle swirl and deadly hot fudge. And you just want to keep eating until you blast your chuck. Dirk. It's like an art museum, but all the paintings are violent symbolism. <laughs> and all the statues are cool people you want to have sex with. Dirk. <laughs> Rusty, what? You're blowing a gape in my metaphor raft here. Why do you keep name dropping? First of all, you just described most art museums. Secondly, you're going to ruin any future sponsorship we have with Dern Good Grub's All You Can Eat Full Plate Buffet. And third, and I have to emphasize, most important, why are you naked? Oh, this old birthday suit? Well, duh. It's because today we're covering an exhibition quest. Jeez, <laughs> someone didn't read the show notes. Dirk. An exhibition quest just means a normal battle axis quest, but with additional press because the team is paying to promote themselves. It does not mean you, they, or any of us need to be naked to enjoy it. Oh, really? So we're not going to get to see the foul crown bearing it, <laughs> bearing it all from flaps to chaps? <laughs> no, Dirk. Can someone get this man a towel? Maybe three or four? Oh, don't be shy. Take it all in, Rusty. I've got the body of a god. Well, some cultures do worship those weird hairless sphinx cats, so in a way you have a point. <laughs> Though that does bear the question why you left your tie on. <laughs> Nudity is no excuse for a lack of professionalism. That couldn't be more backwards. Yeah, yeah, flesh is shame. So the fellow crown are really pumping the old public eye with look at me juice for this mission. Why with the extra publicating? Well, as we know, they've been off the grid a bit lately, no doubt doing personal errands for the commissioner. But today's events promise to be an interesting one. Reading from the Battle Axis show that this is a unique dungeon in our team's collective future. Weirder than being inside a giant dude fighting guts and germs? Well... Weirder than doing battle with, say, a big pile of money and a hole full of ghosts? I mean, you have a point. Weirder than, I don't know, being in a giant casino cake and thwarting a heist with uh, whale grease and birthday songs? Fine. You've made your point. They do a lot of weird stuff. And today should be no exception. There. Happy. It's weird on weird on weird. Well, hot tots. I can't wait to see what kind of exciting rough em ups and smack em downs these heroes dive into head first. I'm so excited I can hardly hide it. Oh, gods, I can see that. Good lords, Dirk. Go to therapy. And maybe a urologist. Cut to commercial. For the love of God, cut to commercial. The Battle Axis, the infinite dungeon around which spins the satellite city of Zenith, stands like a black spire piercing the incomprehensible starless void above the infinite plane of error. The Fallow Crown, soon to be champion raked team of the League of Ultimate Questing, stands poised for yet another sojourn through the skin of the Axis. As the colorless shell of the infinite dungeon parts, you see only darkness within. Yet, as you struggle through that senseless black, a light can be seen in the distance. Hot September sun cuts through the nothingness as you stumble through a large glass double door into mottled gray carpet. Your eyes struggle to adjust to the light which shines through nearly every outer surface of the structure in which you now find yourself. Your other senses recover first. A wave of humanity overpowers your olfactory system as sounds of light revelry fill your ears. All at once, hundreds of shape resolve into humans. Or at least most of them are human, you think. A young woman in a skin-tight jumpsuit is followed by a mechanical construct made entirely of cardboard. A man whose naturally thick and luxuriant facial hair has been shorn into heavy mutton chops, hair styled to two points and rubber claws affixed to his knuckles. You see children with gray face paint and yellow, orange, and white horns on their heads, dinosaurs and neon lycanthropes composed of felt. For a moment, an elf, presumably royalty, but their ears are latex and their staff is plastic. Yet, despite this spectacle... It's you who are the center of everyone's attention. What do these onlookers see? Uh, very out of place in the fantasy costume community. A very, 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 very old man. <laughs> um, <laughs> his skin is gray as ash. The top of his head is midnight black fading down into a gradient. Uh, he wears brown and wine-colored robes, old cracked spectacles on his nose, and an assortment of household knickknacks and Patty wax, and he does give dog bones frequently. Um, <laughs> hang from him. His spell components are all random household stuff. When they see Gaspar, they see the most convincing 
execution of a costume of a headless person. <laughs> uh, decapitated at the neck. A, uh, as opposed to the feet. As, yeah, 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 that's true. <laughs> I mean, if you were decapitated at the feet, you would still be headless. <laughs> yeah. I think you could be decapitated at the shoulders. Right? That's too many questions. <laughs> Does that presume that life is in the feet? The soles of the feet. Uh, yeah. uh, continue, Gaspar, please. Weapons that look like they should not have passed security. <laughs> and I would say just the most convincing prop decapitated head that you could find, except it's inhuman. It looks like it has cat eyes and slightly gold, copper, bronzy skin. You can smell the realism. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. You can smell it, yes. Pentagos is a brown-skinned, statuesque fawn woman with a uh, prosthetic arm made of gold clockwork. With the lower body ears and antlers of a fallow deer. She wears antique arms and armaments from her homeland. Wuxia is eight feet of big, wet, low tide. His skin is <laughs> bloated and bluish like a corpse that's been dredged up from the bottom of the sea. It crawls with life, crabs, little barnacles shoved under his skin like lumps in places. He has a big, wide, confused smile on his face, and one of his legs is replaced at the knee with a pickaxe. Excuse me, I have to get into costume. <laughs> <laughs> He's misting himself. <sighs> Gotta stay damp. That looks right. <laughs> Halifon Orison Jr. is a tall humanoid with a very athletic build. Are you just going to mist periodically as I speak? Don't worry about Careful it. Careful right. with that mic there, Chief. Yeah. <laughs> Zach is like, my audio equipment. He, his skin is covered with thin, reflective lines of metallic platinum in elaborate geometric patterns. And he's wearing no shirt. Of course. One pauldron and a cape which seems to billow of its own accord. There must be some sort of animate wire in there and a very elaborate system, which I've seen people do, which is very impressive. Just some fellow Congo running around with right. a fan following you. He <laughs> is wearing pants and boots, but that's basically his only clothing. And that's the first time you've ever described them. Yes. <laughs> uh, Michael has a wonderful habit of describing his character sans clothing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, they made me write a note on the top of my sheet that said clothes. And the, all of last episode, I kept wondering why I'd written clothes at the top of my sheet. <laughs> and now here we are. Yeah. As applause and praise erupt from the masses, your eyes drift up to a large banner, reading in a language that you don't recognize but can somehow easily read, Welcome to Rose City Comic Con 2023 at the Oregon Convention Center. Woo! <laughs> Woo! It's next year. That's not you. <laughs> <laughs> there you stand in the halls of the Oregon Convention Center, whatever that is, ogled by passersby and uncertain as to your purpose. You were told this was an assassination quest and that your target would become clear soon after entry, but the mediums of the League have never been terribly descriptive when it comes to battle access objectives. And you gaze upon the horde of people pretending to be the very things you kill for a living, you realize that finding your target may be harder than you thought. Ahead, you see signs beckoning you to the convention floor, and all around, the crowd thickens. Oi, Ben. Yes, Swoosh? Where do they keep the organs? I... Uh... I mean, this is the first time I've been here. We'll have to look. That's what the sign says. <laughs> no, you're misreading it. That is a spice. Oh, oregano. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> An entire city of roses? Is this something from Evdemonia? Um, this looks like some kind of a party, but it's definitely not an Evdemonian party. Why would they have carpet? <laughs> also, there's a severe lack of alcohol if this is an Evdemonian party. That is also true. Also, adult things I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> this comic book convention lacks orgies <laughs> he said it they really stipped up the budget the last time I was here with cardboard it was that uh, goblin situation you remember that I thought there was a dungeon well yeah but it was an excess quest and there was cardboard and everything it seems like this is related somehow yeah wasn't that around a year ago I don't know time flows weird in the excess it's non-canonical there's no need to track it <laughs> <laughs> Good. 
my big trouble is how come no one told us we'd be doing a costume ad- 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 adventure? <laughs> they leave me out of everything. You didn't bring your dress with you? The one time it would have been perfect. Well, all I know is we need to look for someone to ugh, assassinate. I mean, based on our past quest, there's a villain. There's a villain. There's a villain. Fuck that guy. That's a villain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but none of them seem hostile. That makes killing them easier. <laughs> Perhaps we should investigate a bit more and ask around to see if anyone is um, keeping a horrific race of subservient slaves or... Stealing lunches out of the break room fridge. Equally bad. (laughs) Hey, Zach, what do I have to roll to uh, have already stolen, like, a mask or a hat for Wuxia? (laughs) (laughs) It would be rather difficult given the fact that right now a crowd is accumulating around you and people are giving you a wide berth. Noticing that Hal literally glows with angelic light, and Iavo seems to like he literally has skin of gray and ash. No one wants to be near you, but everybody wants to stare at you. Also, the realistic weapons are probably kind of off-putting. That too. Yeah. And Wuxia smells like the underside of a fetid dock, so I completely understand people <laughs> staying the fuck away. <laughs> fetid dock. They might also be looking at me. I have cute little hoofs. That's true. <laughs> Almost as you're thinking those words, A man walks up to you with the confidence that he definitely should not have. He's wearing a far too tight shirt with a blue pony with rainbow hair and little wings. He walks up to you and says, Excuse me, I'll give you $100 if I can kiss your hooves. Ooh, cheap (laughs) quietly. I probably shouldn't entertain that question, but what's a dollar? Money. I assume you're from somewhere more important and interesting than this terrible country. Uh, (laughs) Somewhere like Japan. I think we found the person we have to kill. (laughs) That was easy. (laughs) Whatever your currency is, it's of no value to us, I assure you. Uh, Have a good day. Okay. I'm sure you could kiss kiss Wuxia's hooves. He doesn't, he likes that kind of thing. I don't mind at all. He keeps them in his bag. (laughs) <laughs> the man limps away, blushing heavily, and you imagine he might have gotten exactly what he was looking for. Oh, gross. <laughs> We've shamed him. Oh, too real. Too real. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. If all of them are that evil, this is going to be difficult to suss out the yeah. true villain. <laughs> <clears throat> Can I use my divine sense to detect good and evil? I was oh, just no. about Absolutely. to ask about that. Uh, you don't have to roll anything for that. Uh, as you ping outward, you can't sense any immediate nearby evil. But somewhere in this place, there is a deep, resonant reservoir of vile darkness. (laughs) Oh, sorry, I'll move. (laughs) (laughs) Do I have a direction on it? You, it seems to be moving, and it seems very vague. Okay. Well, um, I don't think we're going to have to stealth this mission, but maybe we should try to blend in and take a look around. Hal looks at all of the normies. (laughs) Normies? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Ben, but I can get more kisses than you. Oh. <sighs> it's a contest everyone loses. I hate yeah. losing, <laughs> but that seems... Uh, I'd rather race you somewhere. <laughs> All right, we can do that too. Yeah, let's do that. Might steal some smooches along the way. <laughs> People begin to kind of dissipate away from you, moving instead towards the convention center, or presumably the actual floor itself. Could you imagine waiting in line for a coffee and some giant eight-foot bloated whale runs by and gives you a drive-by smooching? <laughs> <laughs> the wettest of pecs. Leaving a little bit of lip behind. <laughs> <laughs> no it's a thanks. Gift from the deep. I, um... Hey, Gaspar. Yes? I bet you 50 gold that Wusha gets kicked out within the next 30 minutes. <laughs> I feel bad for security, if that's true. 30 minutes. Hmm. 15. Deal. I don't know what a show floor is, but that seems like a good place to look for clues. Pointing to a sign. Seems to be where everyone's going. There's some sort of evil wandering around here, but I'm not sure where it is. It seems to be on the move. Maybe if we go that way, we'll run into it. Let's go find it. You find your way onto the show floor, and it is exactly that, showy. Everywhere you look, there are booths, kiosks, small statues and structures, things that you have never even imagined in your life. Immediately, Gaspar's eyes are drawn to what looks like a large selection of heads waiting to be plucked and enjoyed. 
And as you approach, you see that some of them include a dragon, some kind of predator, Italian plumbers, things you've never even considered. They're catering to my needs. Wow. This is the best place we've ever been. May I see that Italian plumber head, please? <laughs> the man standing behind the, what's the word, desk, is wearing what looks like a mask at close inspection. It's entirely white, and there's just a shock of brown hair up top. He's wearing a jumpsuit and holding a knife. You don't know why you assumed he was a clerk, but now that you're up close, you realize this could be a dangerous person. Ah, it's fine. I'm dangerous as well. Oh, no, 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 no. The one with the green hat, please. <laughs> <laughs> he pulls down a Luigi mask and hands it to you, and that's when you realize to your horror that inside it is hollow. Just like me. <laughs> <laughs> they are selling disguises? Is this some kind of disguise kit? <laughs> What's in Italy? <laughs> it's a boat. Boat with a good pasta. Oh. Are we required to buy them? I keep seeing signs that say masks required. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a steep entrance fee. Well, it, I mean, that is true for some parties, so that makes sense. Oh. I almost immediately, his eyes go wide and he starts drifting away from you, as though compelled by some unseen gossamer thread of fate. Like a homing pigeon, you manage to gravitate towards the most mundane aspect of the convention, a bookseller. And among the books, they're purportedly rare prints of things you've never heard of or seen before in your life. Uh, mostly novels, biographies, but two in particular catch your eye, sticking out of the $1 book box, whatever that means. The first is Perry's Chemical Engineering Handbook, and the other is Shigley's Mechanical Engineering Design. Interesting. I'll pick them up and give them a quick thumb through. Inside of each, you find a wealth of information, the likes of which you've never seen before. Written in plain text in the colloquial common of this place, and riddled with information on sciences ranging from the simple to the hyper-complex. My gods. They did what with what? <laughs> <laughs> Bomb? Close. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, these two, please. The clerk is a stern woman of advanced years and apparently little patience. Ten dollars. Uh, do you accept Quinn? What? A quintessence. Uh, like soul money. I have no idea what you're talking about. Two dollars, please. Uh, gold. Gold? Hand her a gold coin. She takes it, looks at it, gums it for a second, stuffs it inside of her lockbox and hands you one of each of de America's denomination. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point of paper money? That's just stupid. Looking through some of the other books, like, why are these books so thin? They're tiny, and they're all full of drawings. These aren't words at all. Oh, that is pretty cool, though. <laughs> The glossy sheen of the skin, the vibrant colors, the slim body, and not too coquettish flirtation. You have never seen or heard of a comic book before, but the mere sight of them brings thrill to your heart. We used to hunt wolverines back on the farm, but none of them had metal claws or could heal themselves. It's unusual. Wusha, your eyes are drawn the second you walk in to the only place that you assume has any kind of alcohol. You see the word grog in large letters, plastered above what looks like a cobbled-together ship. Oh, good thing I brought my own salt. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder if they need a hand on that boat. The man at the counter is dressed in what you guess is a sailor's outfit. It's got a, a white kind of a flat cap and a little boy shorts and a little bow tied around the neck. He hands you a mug of what you assume is grog and sticks out his hand for what you assume is money. I'm going to... Take the mug, and then I'm going to shake his hand. <laughs> as soon as he feels your massive hand close around his own, and the damp and the barnacles start to cut open his fingers, he realizes the money isn't as important as his life, and he simply lets you walk away with your grog. Oh, bye, friend. <laughs> um, excuse me. Quick question. Do you have the chunky variety? He looks at you with confusion. But no answer. I like my grog with pulp. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's price is listed in dollars. Do you think they exchange foot kisses for goods in this world? Oh, uh, would you kiss this? I'm going to put my pickaxe leg up on the table for a hundred of your dollars. No! <laughs> Not going to get any kisses here. <laughs> how, how did we decide that feet 
we're, we're exchanged for dollars in this universe. Well, as, <laughs> as soon as we came in, that man walked up to you and he asked you, oh. he'd give you a hundred dollars, which is the price that everything's listed. To kiss my hoofs. To kiss your foot. So obviously there's, we're in some sort of very strange orgiastic space where the in, entire currency is based on kissing people's feet. Yes, I understand <laughs> your, your train of thought now. Yes. I follow. I've you yet don't... to study a foot-based economy, but I'm <laughs> The grog is watery and sweet, a hollow substance trussed up with flavors that no proper drink should have. Strawberry, hibiscus, basil, mint. You quaff flagon after stein and feel only the barest of buzz. I'm going to milk some of my own personal seawater into it before I take another drink and see if that helps. <laughs> I don't like that sentence. It's just to water <laughs> it down, but the sweet salt actually does quite help the strawberry hibiscus. Can you never milk yourself in any way again? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty please, thank you. <laughs> That's when you're... Sworn enemy arrives. A throng of garishly dressed humans stroll past the ropes, separating the drinking space from the boring space. They make their piracy known to all, shouting body shanties to the strange metal rafters. Yet no guards come for them. Whatever this Oregon place is, it must be a vile hive of scum and villainy for them to so brazenly <laughs> flaunt their deeds. See, I read it wrong again. It's Rogue City Comic Con. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, these guys. Uh, look, friends, I I don't mean to be rude, but I don't need to be associated with your lot any more than I already am. Do you want uh, kindly fuck off? By all the gods, look at that foot. Is that an anchor or a pickaxe? Either way, I love it. It's a kickaxe. <gasps> oh, oh, oh my god! Everybody crowds around you and begins, like, inspecting every single nook and cranny of your bloated, damaged form. Every time they touch me, I'm going to say, give me a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> After a while, there's a kind of unease that settles over them as they realize you are not wearing a costume. You're just that gross. <laughs> just like in real life. <laughs> <laughs> but that's when Hal runs off as fast as he possibly can, because in large letters on a big banner, he sees something that he assumes reads Kevin Sorbet and something about a barbarian. And assuming that he might have somebody of his own kind here, he just couldn't help himself. <laughs> I assume that most of the women here are barbarians. All of their armor leaves more of them exposed than not. <laughs> <laughs> I keep telling you, Hal, that's for speed. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. All right. It's, it's dexterity armor. Yes. All right. I, I mean, that's that's why I move five feet more per round than you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the tricks. As you approach the section, there doesn't seem to be any crowd. In fact, there's almost nobody there. Just a single person, some kind of security guard standing in front of a table with some kind of awkwardly bulky, strange older man. I'm I so cast, in for this dunk on Kevin Sorbonne. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to use my divine sense again. As you do, you do feel the evil somewhere, but it's not coming from this person. Though you do have a latent non-divine sense that he's kind of a douchebag. Okay. <laughs> Autograph. I, uh, I don't have a pin. He hands you one. I sign him. <laughs> <laughs> As you reach over to sign his chest, uh, the security guard makes a move and then just kind of waves it off. <laughs> <laughs> Huge swooping letters, Halifon, Orison, and then underneath, J.R. Beautiful. I as hand you, him his pen back. As you finish the period and s the man stares at you blankly, your eyes catch something to the corner. A symbol you recognize. Something you would recognize anywhere. For the first time since you arrive, you see the symbol for the League of Ultimate Questing on a banner. In the center, you see the pudgy face of a human with long, wavy hair, a weak beard, and cold, dead eyes of a creative. <laughs> Are you describing you or me? <laughs> <laughs> Beneath this image, the name Zachary Barkas is written in Great Lakes font. It is the title beneath this, however, that catches your eye. It reads, co-creator of the League of Ultimate Questing, Dungeon Master for Season 2 Battle Axis, featuring the Fallow Crown. I take the banner. <laughs> the whole banner yes okay oh yeah that's going in his room <laughs> i bring it back to the rest of the party wear it like a cape yeah <laughs> i already have a cape wear it like an extra cape <laughs> <laughs> double cape <clears throat> hell yeah how did they know about us and this strange place i don't know but look i found the luq symbol and i found the dungeon master 
<laughs> As you you see on it is an, a time that seems to be coordinating with the time you're seeing now, at least nearby anyway, and a room, D-135-136. I mean, we've encountered Dungeon Masters before. That's like Undaedalus. Yeah, but this is he's the co-creator of the League of Ultimate Questing, and I've never heard of him. Yeah, I've read the history. That's not true. No. Didn't we have noodles with that guy? No, that was the commissioner of the League of Ultimate And he, he didn't create the League. He's just the commissioner of... No, yeah, that was Maven that created the League. Okay, but also, co-creator. He has a cohort somewhere. We should go. Does he perhaps work with this Maven character? There's only one way to find out. Let's go. He looks sad to me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he needs our help. I was looking at his eyebrows. I was distracted by how angry he looks all the time. <laughs> And exhausted. He should be pretty easy to chase. <laughs> now that you're done with the celebrity roast, you want to... <laughs> I don't know, I can keep going. <laughs> I don't know, the longer he's up there, the more red his face is getting. It's been four years. <laughs> I have material. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he has very strong legs. <laughs> <laughs> and opinions. As, <laughs> as you... As you approach the doors of room D with 135, 136, <laughs> the gentle susurrus of a crowd can be heard within beneath the projected voice of some performer. Can I hear a susurrus here? Susurrus. There we go. See, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> so, room full of yon tea. <laughs> <laughs> I found the evil. <laughs> the whole hive. The door opens as somebody runs past you holding their genitals, presumably looking for a restroom. Inside, <laughs> you get a glimpse of a room that is boring incarnate. Gray walls, meager beige wood uh, accents. The floor seems to be some kind of mottled red and gray, and you can't tell whether that's because the red is worn away or it was deliberately modeled. You You're are unsure. painting a picture in my mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I can, I can see just it. see it, yeah. The title of that picture is, We're Not Invited Back Next Year. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like there's fake blood splatter all over the carpet. Oh, that's why they have carpet. <laughs> See, we're not the first people here to do our job. As you enter, most of the audience turns towards you with looks of glee on their faces. The man on the stage, however, looks worried, but continues with the panel. Beneath the table that he sits at, there is a sign that says, Due to cast illness, the live performance has been replaced with a Q&A. Gosh, r remind me to be careful next year. <laughs> <laughs> there are two people lined up waiting to ask questions. Who here has a question for me as Dungeon Master of the Battle Axis? Anybody? Anybody. Huh? <laughs> you overshot with two. <laughs> that guy does. I see him. Uh, excuse me, sir? Okay, you got a mic right there, my friend. Oh. Excuse, excuse me, sir? It's not on? Oh my god! This, What's happening? this mic doesn't appear to be on. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that should be good. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, uh, when you put these things together, do you think about how the all the monsters eat? Eat? Yes, eat. Like, when they're sitting there and waiting for the adventurers, how are they just living? Uh, holy crap. That's a good question. That's a great question. Um, well, like, do I they guess... eat each other? Like, is the... I never thought about dungeon ecology. I guess they eat each other. No, they eat magic. They eat magic. They, is there like delivery? Like, do they order delivery in to the dungeon <laughs> while they're waiting for the adventurers? There's there is no grub hub for monsters, unfortunately. <laughs> no door dash action. <laughs> <laughs> well, th th thank you. You are now seeing an opportunity to ask this person questions. Who do you think you are? As the, cr <laughs> as the fellow crown enters the room and stands at the microphone, pushing aside the other person who had a question. Thank you, Gaspar. You ask what? <laughs> who do you think you are? Oh, uh, there's actually a sign right in front of me. Zachary Barkas. Why are you pretending to be the co-creator of L.U.Q.? Look, okay, Law had a lot of ideas, but I definitely helped. I swear, I was there. I was there when he came up with the idea. According to this sign, you're the creator of the Battle Axis? Yeah, that was my season. Are, are you guys fa I mean, I assumed you were fans. You're literally dressed as the characters. If you invented the Battle Axis, then, then what the fuck is wrong with you? 
the fuck is wrong with me? What the fuck is wrong with you? You're literally wearing my character's outfits. Excuse me, I am dressed like an Italian plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Wusha's gonna lean down to the microphone, grab it and say, mm, Yeah, uh, Wusha, Brian Child, uh, the Wandering Tide, uh, I'm yeah, a workaholic. I, I know who you are. Oh, okay. Uh, how the hell do I get my leg back? Where'd you put it? A restoration spell? I don't know. Who's that? <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you rather have the kick axe? It's cool and everything, but sometimes it itches and there's not a leg there to scratch. You have us put so much work into making sure that, I mean, doing the best he could anyway to make it work. Look, I, I appreciate my, my team's hard work, but I don't know what witch wear as my leg and uh, I'd like them not to have it. Kind of glancing at Gaspar, be like, if we had the resources to return someone's missing appendage, I don't think we would start with your leg. I accept second place. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how do you know so much about us? I literally created the show. Co-created, according to the sign. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Michael. I mean, Hal. Who, who's Michael? He's what? you. No, he's come not. On, come on, guys. This is cute and all, but I, we've got a, we got a Q&A to go. Anybody Has anyone named Michael ever been in this kind of shape? <laughs> <laughs> That's... That is a remarkably good burn. It's a w- <laughs> wicked burn on Michael. I'm very glad we don't have to go to the battlefield with someone named Michael. <laughs> <laughs> so, are are you a a dungeon designer or a prophet? A pro. I mean, I do design dungeons for profit. There is no profit involved in LUQ. We have to make that very clear. <laughs> Not for me, anyway. <laughs> are. I mean, do you create the hazards, or are you an arbiter of destiny? That's a... If I was an arbiter of destiny, believe me, I'd be the arbiter of my firsts first. Myself first. Wusha is going to lean into the mic and say, Uh, oi, uh, Wusha, Brian Child, uh, the one... Yeah, you already did this. Oh, all all right, all right. Um, if you have profit, can I, uh, interest you in a certain, uh, lip-related exchange of currency? I am not putting anything anywhere about you in my mouth. Oh, I'm so sweet. <laughs> All right, guys, this is funny. This is cute, but I'm going to go ahead and have to have security take you out if you don't have some serious questions for me. Uh, use your divine sense, Hal. I use my divine sense, Hal. There is a beacon of dark, vile energy pouring off of this man. <laughs> oh, yeah. He did create the battle axis. It's him, all right. Oh, I can that's, see it. That's the guy? It's the guy. Okay, one final question. Can you dodge this? Boink! <laughs> Crossbow. <laughs> go ahead and roll, go ahead and roll attack for me. He's trying to get the assassin part over quick, huh? <laughs> Gotta get back to that grog hut. Oh, that's a 15 to hit. Does the um, Q&A table give him cover? Uh, it does not. Uh, however, he does stick his hands up out of extreme panic, and as he does, it simply deflects. Plot armor. (laughs) That's what they're all wearing. (laughs) Okay, I guess he can dodge it. Well, it's a a crossbow bolt. Let's try something a little more. (laughs) The audience is adoring this because they all assume that it's part of the show. But there's a subtle amount of unease that's spreading throughout the crowd as they realize that's a real crossbow bolt once it embeds itself into the wall. Well, just wait till they see this uh, firebolt. <laughs> oh, Jesus, okay. <laughs> hit, hit me with it. Uh, I, are you telling me that I do, or are you asking me to roll? I mean, I think you have to roll for it, right? <laughs> I, I absolutely do. Okay. I don't um, know, dungeon master. <laughs> Why don't you tell us? I never claimed to be a book master. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Barkis? Yes? Um, be, be, before, before my companions manage to kill you, I have a quick question. <laughs> yeah, the firebolt is just slowly traveling through the air. <laughs> <laughs> If you are the designer of the battle axis, why would the battle axis give us a quest to um, slay you? That's a very good question. I'm not in the battle axis. I'm in Oregon, and you're insane. Zach, what's your armor class? (laughs) (laughs) How would you roll? Not great. I got a 12. Give me the number 12. That does not do it. (laughs) Great. Uh, The magic seems to dissipate. Something seems to keep you from hurting me. However... He stands up. I stand up. Someone stands up. Someone in the room named Zachary Barkas stands up. You get the idea. Which one are you? And he gestures towards three individuals. 
And as he does, <clears throat> three dudes, not one, begin to embrace. You love to see it. <laughs> you love to sing. <laughs> A show of bromance unrivaled. Yet, as their flesh begins to meld into one, bromance transforms into brorer. <laughs> The bodies fuse into a single feline torso with six legs beneath it. Wait, the fingers. Hold, hold up the hot. Hold up. <laughs> You've got a the fingers out. of two. <laughs> Perfect. The deep. fingers of two hands elongate into frames of wings as webbing of flesh grows between them. Three heads sprout from the neck of the beast as the chimera unleashes a terrifying <laughs> roar. <laughs> <laughs> you can do better than that. <laughs> No, wait, wait. Hit, hit, us, hit us with a bro. Bro. That's a bro. I am shooketh. I am shooketh, dude. It is at that moment that you realize this dungeon master has more powerful than you could possibly imagine. And now it's time for a short commercial break. Hey, all you cuties. I believe in a thing called mid-roll. Welcome to our live episode recorded at Rose City Comic Con 2022. That's why it sounds how it does. Zach did a great job of setting up our audio and recording gear with very limited time and very little room, which is the only reason we have this content at all. So cheers to you for that, Dungeon Boy. We we're planning on bringing you this episode after the next chapter, but we needed to move it up a little bit, so we hope you enjoy listening to it as much as we enjoyed playing in it. If you truly want us to keep making LUQ for a long time, the most direct support you can give us is by joining Patreon. Simple as that. And there's plenty in it for you, with loads of content for your home game, bonus audio, and all the amazing maps, including the new Dice Box Battle Map. Leaving a review is another great way to show support, if money's a concern, as well as telling your friends and family about the show. But if you feel like you can, our highest tiers are a great way to show the world that you're part of the community. You can have a character that you design join the world's meta, or be mentioned with the legendary mid-roll teams. The current legendary mid-roll teams are the Twilight Concord, the Ceaseless Horde, and this week's featured team, the Titans Rise, with Christopher Mashburn, Dylan Hoyt, aka Meat Dad, and John Reinhardt. To get a personal message read on the show or for possible advertising opportunities, reach out to admin at slapdashstudios.com. Don't forget to follow us at twitch.tv forward slash slapdash streams for Monday Night Live premieres of the LUQ, Pokemon Soul Link Nuzlocks during the week, and this Thursday is Pen Pals, and they'll be playing Sea of Thieves, so it'll be a salty good time. We can't wait to bring you the next chapter of the show, and thank you for your patience during this break from the main story. It'll be worth the wait, believe you me. That's enough out of this guy. Let's get you back to the battle axis. <laughs> My brother, it is a joy and honor to ride beside you through the fields of Ashen Fane, our hair blowing back in the wind, the horizon waiting to embrace us. But I must ask of you a question. Speak, horse brother. When we ride, your hair, it does not flow like it used to. Mine grows tangled and matted as the wind whips it to and fro, but yours remains untouched, as though you wear some kind of invisible helmet to shield it. Am I going mad? Have the gods cursed my mind? Your mind is uncursed, my equestrian-inclined soulmate. While I bear no enchanted armaments, there is a kind of invisible helmet that protects my locks from the ravages of the sun and coal. A new product, just for long, majestic hair, like ours. But there is no dampness or weight to an ungent or cream to my eyes. Oh, damn my eyes! Perhaps the madness is real! Be calmed, dear brother, rider of my horse's brother, brother horse. There is no cream or ungent. It is a spray, a fine mist that hardens like iron, but shines like the surface of the distant sea. What is this spray called, Saddlekin? Tell it to me now. It is called... <laughs> Stronghold! Stronghold, stronghold, it'll keep your hair from 
going anywhere. Oh, yeah. While you listen to that, remember that Law used to have a roommate. <laughs> That's true. I would like all of you to roll me initiative, including you three. Oh, fuck. We got a big old fat D20 Ooh. for you. Oh, dip. We go ahead and stand up. I want all three of you to join us up here towards the front of the stage. Ooh. Come on and party dip, with dip, us. <laughs> yeah, roll at our feet. <laughs> <laughs> for the record, I don't have $100 to give you if you kiss them, so. <laughs> Uh, 17 on the die. Oh. Uh, what is it, just plus dex? So 17. Yeah, yo, hold Who back wants to on keep initiative rolls. for me? Dave? No. Oh. Awesome. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> thank you, friend of so the show. So much audience participation. Yeah, thank you, friend of the show, Dave Mladenov. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. Everybody roll your initiative? I, Not mine. I rolled it. <laughs> Hal has an 8. Oh, I'll race it to the bottom. Wusha's got a seven. Nice. That's what I rolled on the die. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I have an 18. Hell yeah. Eight as well. Whoa. That's not a Gaspar number. Uh, now that I'm playing my character correctly and have read my class abilities, I have a 16. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always say. Iavos is the fastest of us. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of them's going first, Dave? Yeah. Oh no, I just have layer actions. Thank you very much. Okay, well, since we are beginning at round 20. Wait, what about these guys? No, what was we're that? 17, she's 18. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 17 total. I am initiative 20, which means I begin with a layer action, and that was summon Conster. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get a layer action at every 20th initiative, and I also have reactions. So, get ready for those. Conster is very good. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, it's me. Um, <laughs> Pentecost draws her blade, and as she unsheaths it, it is wreathed in green flames. Green flames! <laughs> as she holds it point down, her eyes take on a green glow, and the flames sputter out, only to erupt on the creature. I cast Fairy Fire. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use my legendary reaction. Uh, it is entitled, Guys, This is a Comedy Podcast. I'm going to force you to do that exact same thing again, but funnier. <sighs> <laughs> or sillier. It doesn't have to be funnier. It can just be sillier. Okay. Pentecost instead is going to leave her sword sheathed, uh, grab a wired microphone, run it over to the Gymera, hand it to them, and then... Uh, shave off part of the wire casing and pour water on it from a water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Electricity arcs all over them, creating a fairy fire effect, but they do get a save. That is a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> we got a natural one. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Not only are you fairy fired, you're very fairy fired. Very, very okay. Fire. That's the best fairy fire I've ever done. <laughs> where can I get these strange ropes where we come from? I don't know. I've never seen one before in my life. So just a heads up, we have about 20 minutes left in the show, so we're going to have to move this along hard. You got it. That's the end of my turn. That makes it the Gymera's turn. Uh, okay, so we have three attacks. Oh. Awesome. Um, oh. You want to do your breath weapon first? Uh, sure. The... Sickly green head will sort of look at Pentecost, kind of blush a little bit, <laughs> as a line of acid shoots towards her. That was good foley work. We should get him on as a guest. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so that ability is nervous yarts from the Jeff head. <laughs> the Jeff has never been really good at talking to quote unquote oh, a females uh, unless mm. he's threatening them online. Jeff, however, horks up a line of a or a thirty foot cone of acid directly at you. Oh, bunny tails! <laughs> because you're all grouped up in the same area, it's going to go ahead and hit all of you. I want everybody here to roll me a dexterity saving throw. Oh, Are you sure it's not a con save? <laughs> <laughs> that would be conventional. Nat 20. Ooh. Nice. Ooh. All right. I am not getting in the way of that. <laughs> I got, that a, I got seven. Nice. The I, I am a wizard. <laughs> I just nimbly step behind Woosh. Let's go in order. How? Uh, continuing the theme from our latest recording, I also rolled a nat 20 and doubled up. 
Jill. Nice. Luis. Wooster gets a 15. Fatty Natty. 27. <laughs> Seven. All right, so we're going to go ahead and roll the damage for Jeff's nervous yarts. <laughs> Want to use preset damage to save time? Oh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use the preset damage to save time. Thank you, Law, for being better than me at this. Uh, that's going to be 21 acid damage, cut in half to 10 for those of you who saved. Are you, are you sure? <laughs> yes. I fully evade it. Zero. Oh, because you're rogue. I'm, uh, I'm going to cast Absorb Elements. Mm. Did, the, did the 15 make it? I missed that. Oh, it's uh, DC 14. Sorry. Gotcha. Thank you. Ah, I stood behind Wusha, but he has holes in him. <laughs> I'm just so used to all of you failing completely and miserably or totally spanking the roll, so I just assumed that you knew you knew whether you failed or not. That's fair. That's fair. I'm going to drag my saber down on the carpet, make like a little flap, and then lift it to protect me. <laughs> Wow, this carpet they, has seen so much filth and degradation that it is somehow hardened to the point where you are in no danger whatsoever behind it. <laughs> Apparently, this carpet has seen worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's seen plenty of Jeff Yards, please. You don't know Brad, but you can tell that he doesn't shower. I'll go, I'll, I'll go ahead and read that. He's really <laughs> <cool>. <laughs> um. uh, Brad is going to do his uh, his breath weapon. and uh, it's just bad breath. It's just bad breath. It's bad breath Brad. Uh, if Brad owned a suit, hygiene wouldn't be his strongest one. The Brad head exhales poison gas in a 15-foot cone. Each creature in that area also must make a dexterity saving throw DC 14. So oh, he's no. got Brad breath. He's got Brad breath. Brad breath. I know what I was doing. <laughs> this is, you said this one actually is con? Uh, yes. Do we get an advantage on con at the con? Mm, no. Fuck. Hey. All right. Uh, 16. The most aberrant 20 the lands have seen. 14. Six. A 19. Woo. It seems only <laughs> Gaspar fails. Uh, it turns out this poison gas uh, just seems to have an affinity for the carpet that you've pulled up and just kind of wraps <laughs> around you, enfolding your body and doing some pretty serious damage. Y'all are going to take another 21 or cut in half. Gaspar, you need to get your head in the game. <laughs> you've released more bad breath that was trapped <laughs> under the carpet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Yavos. Uh, Yavos panicking, looking around, trying to figure out what of this domain could be used to slay this guy, Mera. Uh, he sees someone doing a cloud cosplay and grabs the buster sword and casts <laughs> catapults. <laughs> <laughs> this is the largest sword I've ever seen. Surely it will strike true. Uh, I need the guy, Mera, to make a deck save at uh, 16. Natural, natural 20. Oh! oh fuck! Right. <laughs> cool it down. We're supposed to win. <laughs> it's not my die. Well, uh, because it passes them, the mechanics of Catapult mean it probably destroys the table and all of the audio <laughs> equipment on the stage <laughs> by exploding right, onward. <laughs> fuck! It's made of cardboard and foam. <laughs> Next up, Gaspar. Gaspar would like to climb that projector screen. Oh, okay, that one. Got it. Yep. Ooh, that's a 13 for acrobatics. I mean, it's just a projector screen. Yep. I think you're fine. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I would like to uh, then ride it down to fall onto the Gymira. All right. The projector screen got a 14 on its constitution saving throw to see if it can handle your tremendous you know, booty cake sliding down on it. <laughs> uh, but you are actually totally fine. Uh, what happens to the Gymira? Uh, you're going to go have, head and have to roll. Okay, okay. I wonder if people without heads are weaker in this plane. <laughs> what do you have? Uh, what am I supposed to roll here? What, do you want? what are you trying to do? I want to be on top of it and ride it down onto the Gymira. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sorry. I, I, sure. I thought you were trying to fall on top of him and do damage. That's fair. Okay. Uh, a very weak, small aluminum thing falls on top of a very large monster. Yeah. Um, it's going to take four damage. Okay. Dude. <laughs> First blood. <laughs> After we all took 42 from breath weapons. <laughs> but hopefully they can't aim their breath weapons anymore. And then from above the projector screen, I am going to then stab around with my saber. Awesome. Go ahead and give me a roll on that. Uh, that is going to be a 25 to hit. Ooh, they are fairy that fired. Definitely hits. They are fairy fired, so I get to roll to see if I crit, which I don't. Tragic. Oh, gourd. Um, that is going to be 20 points of damage. Nice. Anything else coming out of the road? Uh, no, I'm just using my weight, the projector screen, and poking holes through it. Perfect. Perfect. How? How? I will um, take my glaive that made it through customs. 
<laughs> <laughs> and uh, I will attack the Gymera with it in what will probably be the most horrific bloodbath that the Khan has ever seen. Sounds good. <laughs> I don't know. I was here last year. Um, I'm not sure if Smite needs them to be evil, but they are all aligned awful evil. Okay. Uh, so I, with the advantage, I rolled a natural one and then a natural 20. <laughs> oh, <laughs> whoa! Fairy Fire doing its Fairy. job. So, I, I, so I'm casting Barbarian Fireball. That's and, totally fair. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use a Smite. Okay, can you go ahead and give me the average damage instead of the... Uh, the... How much health do you have left? <laughs> oh, you did just take 20 from the uh, Rogue, so... Oh, right. Yeah, you got about 52. Uh, 52. Okay. Well, it's 3d6, so the average of that is 10, plus... I was trying to avoid math. 48. Yeah, no, well, I, have yeah. To, I have to calculate it now. But just say it's like 40. 40 damage. That's, that's okay, cool. About average. cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so you're going to go ahead and take 40 damage. Uh, the guy Mara screams and thrashes as your halberd slices into them. Uh, I'm assuming so you used your smite reckless attack and everything, just the whole, the whole yeah, stack? Yeah, okay, yeah that, was the, that was smite. That was, I didn't need reckless attack because of fairy fire, and, and I only had the one action. So How much Sounds damage perfect. was that? Like 40, <sighs> <sighs> roughly. <Yeah. laughs> uh, that makes a lot of sense. Awesome. So that makes it. Come here, man, Kent. I want to give you a hug. <laughs> Wuxia is going to pick up his magic harpoon with the, the ghostly chain attached to it, and he's going to throw it at the kitty. Awesome. Herc. Oh, I rolled like hot garbage. I should clarify, it is not an actual feline body. It's just dude body shaped like a cat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> Meow. Man cat. <laughs> with his first attack, Wuxia gets a whopping 13 versus... Uh, uh, Bromanticor's AC. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, okay, cool. I didn't hear that. That's oh, a miss. Crap. Uh, I'm gonna tug my harpoon back on its chain and go for another shot. Stop tugging your harpoon. There's children about. <laughs> Still trying to get kicked out. That second one's gonna be a 21 total. That's a hit. Fantastic. And we are looking at 15 damage for that one. Awesome. Uh, that's. Plenty. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, so as you throw your harpoon, it managed to go through the eye, down the spine, out the butt, and then when you pull it through, most of the organs seem to come with it. Do you want us to act that out? or uh, <laughs> if, you, if you could, please. <laughs> and it makes this noise. <laughs> the guy Mara can make exactly one sound. <laughs> Wuxia proudly holds up the grossest yakitori imaginable and says, I found the organs! <laughs> you can't be rearranging people's guts in public, dude. Come that on. I already asked what the fuck is wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are back at the top of the initiative, which means I'm going to go ahead and take my layer action, but I'm going to take two layer actions because we're <gasps> running out of time and I want the rest of the people to come up. So, the first thing that happens is... Oh. Thank you three so much, by the way. <laughs> Zach points to somebody in the crowd. Bones crack as legs and arms elongate. From their mouth spill a mucus, uh, a spill of mucus, carrying with it writhing purple-gray tentacles. The flesh shifts to match them as cephalopodic chromatophores spread across their skin like fire. With a snap of their long, damp fingers, their outfit transforms. A fishnet stocking climbing up their legs. Red and blue short shorts manifest from the ether. <laughs> White and red baseball shirt phase shift into existence with the word <laughs> Brainy's Little Muncher scrawled across the tress, cross scrawled across the chest as the cosplayer is born. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Perfect. Uh, go ahead and give me uh, add yourself into the initiative at whatever role is appropriate there. That'll be a ten. And let's go ahead and continue with... Penny. That's a penny. Oh, I, I thought the dungeon master was going to cheat and summon another monster. Yeah. I was. That was the intent. But the other monster isn't here. Oh, in that case. <laughs> um, Mr. Uh, Cosflayer, sir, I'm, I'm sorry to inform you. You are being hunted. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to use my bonus action to cast <laughs> Hunter's Mark. Um, smearing some of the Gymera's blood on my shield and having it appear on this creature. Then I'm going to go in for the Eldritchest of Smites. <laughs> go for it. First one is a 25. That's a hit. Um, that's going to average out to 32 damage. 
Jesus Good Christ. God. <laughs> I'll double check my math on that later, but I think that's right. What are we, level eight? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, using Thirsting Blades, I get another attack. Good okay, of course you do. Of course you do. I am out of spell slots, for what it's worth. Uh, this one, I get a measly 24 to hit, and I, uh, I deal 24 damage. Oh, well, at least they match. <laughs> What's that total between the two? Uh, a lot. Okay, good. I, was just, I wasn't sure if it was a lot, but I'm glad you told me. Uh, <laughs> She's making kill Amari. <laughs> 56. Perfect. Thank you. Six. Now, when Zachary Barkas points to another member of the crowd, you expect the body to change, but instead, the bag they're holding explodes. From it, foam swords, dice, T-shirts, all manner of bizarre items and accoutrements that you've seen all throughout the con begin to crawl and grow and scream. The mouth spreads open in a roar, and inside you see sharpened D4s instead of teeth as the swagon is brought into existence. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a dragon scream? <laughs> He's very tired. <laughs> <laughs> From carrying all that swag. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Initiative roll. Uh, Ooh. 16. Nice. Um, that I believe that makes you next. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and say the swagon has more dexterity than the old man. Yep, that's very fair. Go ahead and give me that action. Okay. I'm less dexterous than a pile of crap. <laughs> go ahead and get that microphone right on their face. Okay. I, I'm going to use the cone of swag. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the swagon expectorates a 30-foot cone of mall ninja swords, sharpened dice, Enameled pins with missing fasteners and razor sharp pamphlets for male enhancements. Oh my God. <laughs> I want everybody, I want all four of you to go ahead and give me a DC 14 dexterity saving throw. The one time I don't cast bless. I have an 18. Mm -hmm. Which has a big wet disappointment with an 11. Uh, entranced by the swagon, I got a 12. Nice. 18. Nine. Awesome. Uh, you'll be taking 49 slashing damage. Oh, but in half if you succeed. Is that enamel? That's beautiful. Ah! <laughs> 49? Yeah. Hold the phone. Or zero if you're a rogue. Oh, or zero if you're a rogue. Thank God, I'm lucky. Guys, look at all these cool pins I got. Or 12 if you're raging and pass your save. I've um, got about 11. This is a long points. shot, but is this creature fey? Uh, the creature is not fey. I'm down. That's oh, absolutely fair. <laughs> Wushaw's out, too. All right. All right. Zachary Barkas waves his hands and says, Stop, stop, guy, Jesus, wow! First of all, didn't know I could do that. Points to the nightmarish man-beast and the cosplayer and the swagon, I guess. I, I don't know why you're here. I don't know why I'm here. But quite frankly, I'm tired of running this show. If you're here to kill me, go ahead. <laughs> this quest just got very real. He waves his hands, trying to brush away whatever magic is keeping him alive, and holds his arms out. I don't know, I think it's more of a punishment to leave him like that. <laughs> <laughs> I told you he looks sad. <laughs> okay, so what you're saying is, instead of killing him, we should make him do a season three? Yes. Mm. Actually, I think that would should, kill me. That would kill me. I think That's going to kill me. I think we should just go off script and and start going off on personal tangents and make as many references to things as we possibly can. <laughs> I'm going to start fiddling with knobs. <laughs> no, God, no. Okay, I, it took me the whole. I had to set that up myself. That's all my equipment. Just, just kill me. He I just, swear, it's so much better than messing with the tech. Does he throw himself into the jaws of this wagon just of his own free power? Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> He crawls over to the swag and puts his head into the jaws of it, but the swag seems disinterested with devouring its own. It's already <laughs> emptied its swag sack. <laughs> so, so you, the cosplayer would be more than happy to devour your brains. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, no, awesome. And then, and then you'll have my intelligence. And then you can run the show. Take it. Take it all. Happily. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with that, the cosplayer attacks and, and grapples Zachary Barkas with its tentacles while simultaneously inf insulting... Your seams and your grommets are showing. <laughs> <laughs> the cosplayer uses extract fashion. Uh, <laughs> the cosplayer kills the target by extracting and devouring in their entire sense of style and also their brain. Okay. My head bursts as the con dissolves and you are left standing in an empty room, just like this one. 
With a door at the opposite end, signaling your exit. I lay on hands, Penny and, or Pen and Wusha, just to make sure they make it out. Oh, right, I'm unconscious. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You drag your friends through the door and find yourself on the outside of the battle axis, free from the hell that is Oregon. Oh, that's so good. I I think this was a time dungeon. (laughs) Somebody's holding a sign that says five minutes. Thank you all for coming. Sorry for all the hiccups. We had a lot of issues today. But we did our best. If you like any of this stuff, please check us out. Uh, You can find League of Ultimate Questing basically anywhere. We're going to be doing a cast meetup after the show. Well, I mean, not immediately after the show. It's going to be at 5 o'clock at at, uh, Retro Game Bar. So feel free to join us if you can. Otherwise, we'll see you hopefully next year. Um, if anyone wants to chat, I'll probably hang out outside for a little bit after this. Yeah, we'll, all, a couple of us will stick around outside the door for a little bit. Thank you all so much! Thank you. Thank you. We Thank wish you luck. I love you. Until next year, we wish you luck. <laughs> <laughs>